I first found a boys club when I was five years old. My mom was pregnant with my sister. My mom told me this story about several years ago. I said, I looked up at this big rock building and I said, well, what is that? And she said, well, that's the boys club. And I said, the boys club? Well, Dennis the Menace goes to the boys club. I'm a boy. Why can't I go? We said, well, let's go see. Me and one of my best friends who we'd started the Keystone Club at the North Rock Boys Club at the time. And uh, so we were selected as delegates to attend in Chicago to the first National Keystone Conference. That was in 1977. And uh, I, I, I started working at the club full time. Somebody asked me one time, why do you continue to work at, at, the, at the Boys and Girls Club? You know, you, private sector's so much more lucrative for you. And I said, well, I see it as a responsibility that Jim put on my heart to give back. It's uh, paying, paying him back for all he did for uh, me and my family. The elephant in the room is, is going from Boys Clubs of America to Boys and Girls Clubs of America. I was on the original task force that Tom Garth and probably Mr. Caulfield put together to talk about, before we even became Boys and Girls Club, to talk about serving girls and boys and doing the best for both. And I remember the, the meeting in New York City. It was very passionate and uh, uh, there's a lot of good conversation. A lot of things that, that we said back then have come to fruit. Uh, so uh, that would be the obvious uh, biggest change. The passion again goes back to Mr. Wellington and, and watching him all those years and, and how he handled the club and how he handled uh, young people, and how he handled the adults. And it's my contention that adults are a whole lot more difficult to deal with in our organizations than the young people are. The young people are easy. It's the grown folks that sometimes can be a challenge. We're not talking about doubling staff. In some cases, we're probably going to be talking about tripling staff, especially in a, in a small club site, because if you're sending boys and girls, you just, it's my attitude at that time, and it's still my attitude, you just can't send a male staff member or a female staff member, because you never know what issue is going to come up. You need to make sure that, that you're covered. What I've told people in the past is, is if you've got a st staff issue, it's because you're not raising your own. We probably have an average tenure of 18, 19 years among our staff. Uh, I've, been, I've been at that club now 26 years. There's two staff people that I have that's been there longer than I have. But they both grew up in that club. So they have a passion for that club. We're always thinking about where we're going, what we're going to be doing for our membership, uh, how we're going to help them grow, and uh, making sure they're, they're taken care of and getting the things they need to be productive adults. We've got a group of alumni members that we call it the A-Team. They all come through the club. They were all very faithful members as kids. Anytime we have a, an important financial resource development event, one or all three of those kids are going to speak at some point. And uh, at the end of the day, not only does that motivate funders, it motivates our staff because they always give thanks to the staff for what they were able to provide them as kids that enabled them to be like they are today. In order to be a Boys and Girls Club professional, all you have to do is care. You have to be committed. You have to have the right attitude. You have to show respect. And you have to do it every day, whether you're at the club or you see the kids at the mall or the grocery store.